Hey guys, I'd like to talk to you today about the WizNet Wiz 750SR serial port server. So what you can do with a serial port server is take devices that uh, can only communicate uh, serial and uh, connect the port server to it. Lo and behold, you can communicate to it um, from the other side of the world if you want. So it's a neat way to bring new connectivity to serial devices. So this is actually the brain right here. This is the WizNet 750SR port server. You could embed this in your, into your project and this guy can communicate using TTL voltage levels. So we're talking a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. But um, if you want to communicate using uh, RS-232 or 485 levels, you want to go ahead and pick up this evaluation board. And not only does it have a uh, DB9 connector for 232 or 485. It's got some breakout buttons here so you can do even even more testing. This little guy literally took me about two minutes to program which I was pretty shocked compared to other port servers that I've uh, worked with. It was uh, pretty amazing. So of course we have an Ethernet cable and serial 5 volts to program it, you go ahead and connect to the uh, USB connector. Okay, so let me uh, explain my demo setup here. So, what I've got is, these are re industrial remote I.O. modules. So, imagine um, you have a controller, um, but you need to control something that's a thousand feet away or a mile away. Um, these little uh, boxes provide that capability. They've got built-in radios. Um, you can set them up to communicate with each other, um, but you can also get a master radio and communicate with up to 60 or 4 of these. I'm going to come up with another video completely uh, focusing on the Rio devices, but what you need to know is this is a serial device, so it, it expects you to have a controller here at the master radio um, or you have this in your office um, connected to a computer to communicate to these devices. But since we can use this serial port server, now um, you don't need a controller here. You can put them all over the world and pull them remotely. And that's actually what I'm doing. I have a, I'm using Ignition and ACM because these are Modbus devices. So Ignition is the SCADA host. An ACM is a polling engine that can communicate Modbus RTU. It can also communicate Modbus RTU over TCP IP, which is what happens when no longer is it Modbus RTU to a serial port, it's Modbus RTU over TCP IP. So we have a user interface here, of course. Um, we've got two devices, Rio 1, Rio 2. And uh, up top we've got battery voltage, analog inputs, analog outputs. So let's start with these digitals here. You'll see when I switch this on, light will come on on the device, and also the item. Oops, I don't want to. Was trying to write to it here. So I'm gonna start switching these on. And you'll see the check mark next to DI. The DI starts coming on along with the little lights. And my LEDs went to sleep. So here we go. So all four is on. I'm going to start switching them off. I'm pulling every two seconds. You can actually see the little lights over here. Transmit and receive. All right. So let's look at analog inputs. So on my little board here, I'm going to do analog input number one. I'm going to go ahead and crank this up a little bit. And then I can go ahead and crank up uh, number two here. I'll crank them both up all the way, how about? And you see they all max out at 40.95. I'm going to try to use my touch screen to crank this analog output all the way up. Come on easier with the mouse. You can see that LED came on all the way. 
Oh, we can also do the digital. So I'm going to push this button. These devices have relay outputs. So you can see there's one is on. I'm going to go ahead and do number two here. Two is on. This status for one should go off. Let's go ahead and turn two off. To get started programming the 750SR, go ahead and plug in the USB to your computer and put Ethernet in. You're going to want to go to the wizwiki.net site and find your device, 750SR. Alright, let's go ahead and scroll down and we need to grab the configuration tool. So go ahead and go ahead and download the latest version from GitHub. Once you have the WizNet configuration tool, go ahead and install it and fire it up. So go ahead and click search and it's going to search uh, all of your USB ports for a device. Click and you found your device that quick. So to configure it for my application um, you could actually uh, switch it to DHCP if you want. Uh, instead, um, I changed the IP address. This isn't the IP address it comes up with initially. I put in the gateway. That's my router here in the building. The only other thing I changed is I set the baud rate. So my device wants 9600 baud. After you've made the changes that you like, go ahead and click setting and that goes ahead and loads your device and after clicking that button you can open a command prompt and you should be able to ping the, the device uh, with the IP address you just set so it's live and ready to be connected that's it now we just need to hook everything back up here. We actually go over and look at my uh, polling engine. It was failing, it couldn't connect to the device and then bam, it's communicating happily now. But let's go ahead and I'll give you a quick crash course. I apologize, I'm not going to do a, I'm just going to use my camera here. So couple things. This thing right here is called ACM. It's Autosol Communication Manager. So ACM is a OPC server and what you do is you fire the thing up and you start adding devices. So in here you add objects. So these are objects connect to Modbus devices. In this case we had two. And these objects use uh, a register set, a Modbus register set, to tell it how this particular Modbus device has custom, customized Modbus. Modbus can be customized, unfortunately. We also have a schedule to schedule how often to pull it. I go ahead and open up one of these devices. You'll see that um, it has a little log down there, so it shows. But we put in the IP address in the port. Um, the Modbus address, uh, give it its uh, schedule, tell it how to connect. In this case, we're going TCP. I also had a serial port here, so if we wanted, you can actually just switch this guy over to use a serial port instead. Alrighty. So that's kind of the polling engine. You know, we have only have two devices here, but um, I've had systems where we have thousands of devices and, you know, as the devices go out or things are changed, you might have to change the type of device or IP address. You can see that there are a lot of different um, protocols here. This uh, engine can communicate not only Modbus, but it can communicate using Bristol BSAP or uh, Kimray. Let's see, we've got Rock, we've got ABB, Total Flow, and so forth. All right, so this thing really doesn't do much besides facilitate communications. Um, and then it serves up that data to a SCADA host system. In this uh, instance, I'm using Ignition by Inductive Automation. You can go download Ignition and go through their 
online training and run it for free uh, for two hours at a time to learn this stuff if you want. But what you do is you go ahead and launch the designer and here's the ignition designer. This is where you can actually um, um, browse OPC so I can actually open the OPC browser and I'm connected to ACM so we've got those two devices we were looking at. So I can actually pop this out here and drag this tag over. Bam. So now that I have a tag I can actually drag it. I can choose from the palette of things to put on the screen or I can drag it and drop it. Say hey give me a multi-state indicator. Now, well, right now it's a zero, it's off. So that kind of gives you a quick crash course of how this thing is all, all connected together. There's lots of different controls, of course, so we can go into run mode. While you're designing, you can have it connected up to live data, which is definitely very helpful for your development. Go ahead and click. You can listen to those relay outputs. Click over there. So that's about it for this video. Um, I'm going to continue to build more videos on getting started with Ignition and ACM and these Rio uh, remote I.O. devices. So as I add the videos, I'm going to go ahead and attach them to my Hackster.io project post. So um, there'll be a link to it down below. So thank you for watching and please go check out the Hackster project.